questions that you would like to ask, feel free to contact us, reach out to any of us. All our emails are on the website and we will arrange to meet with you separately. Also with the video, we'll be sending a parent guide to secondary and a student guide to secondary that gives you um, the information. You can read that at your leisure. Okay, so we will start with everybody in the team. So I'm Lindsay Wing, I'm the Director of Inclusion. So I work across primary and secondary. Again, apologies that my camera isn't working, but you can see my photo there. We have um, Kaylin Smallberger, Maggie Jackson, Janice and Zara, who are our inclusion teachers. And we have Sundas, Beth and Olga, who are inclusion LSAs. Our aim is that we focus on different year groups. Um, Kaylin and Janice are predominantly within the English department in secondary. Um, Maggie will be focusing on maths and Zara's focusing on, on uh, science. That's also the same with our LAs. They go into the classes um, in their focus subject areas and um, will be helping out in the classroom there. So, We'll start off with how do we support our students? Um, please let me know if my slides aren't moving on or anything. Um, so we have an overall document that we keep and it's got every single one of our students on there. It's very, it's exactly the same as primary and it's called our provision map. <clears throat> our provision map outlines the support that every single child is getting from the classroom to kind of small group, um, small group interventions up to larger interventions. And that also includes having an ed psych involved, um, OT and speech and language. I will go into a bit more detail in, the, um, in that in a moment. On there, we have what's happening in the classroom, what's happening in small group in interventions and what's happening um, in larger sessions and in primary that would be Arabic exemption and in secondary we call it directed study sessions. Linked to the provision map is our student learner profiles. Our student learner profiles are sent out three times a year and they are reviewed with the class teacher and with the student and with yourselves as parents. We set targets with the teacher because what's happening in the classroom, we will be looking at that in our directed study sessions. And when we go into classrooms, we will be looking at those um, targets that they're meeting in the classroom. So the, the student profile is very much geared to the individual child. Not everybody will get to the learner profile, and I will go into detail about that in a moment. Um, then we have our in-class support. So as much as we can, we get into classes um, and support the children within the classroom. It isn't on a one-to-one -one basis. It's usually with other children within the classroom, but we're there to support and help. And our children are really, really good at asking for help. They like the extra person in the classroom. So even children who aren't on the inclusion register often ask um, for our help as well. So we're there within the classroom. As I said, we do support outside of the classroom in secondary. We have directed studies. Now, directed studies can be anyone who has Arabic exemption and has a modern foreign language exemption, so Spanish or French. This could be just MFL exemption and it can just be Arabic exemption or it can be a combination of two, which can give you um, an extra uh, five hours of support outside the, um, the classroom. A lot of children don't have those exemptions, so we try to get children in what we call prep. That is on everybody's timetable, and it's a certain um, portion throughout the week that classes come back together as their tutor groups, and this could be homework time, um, it could be asking questions about work, catching up on work, and we can take some children out from those. We also can run morning sessions, so we've done things, we've carried on, you know, things with toe by toe and things like that, so we can have our morning sessions set up as well, and we also do have a homework club that we run all year, and we invite the children on the inclusion register to come, but it is open to other children as well. So there's always a teacher there to be able to help them with their homework. Every single child on the register, whether you have a learner profile or not, will have a link teacher. Um, and 
in September, um, August, should I say, you will get receive an email from your link teacher introducing yourself. They are your point of contact with anything to do with inclusion. Um, they will meet with you regularly. You can drop them an email if you have a question um, and they will organise for you to come into school or talk about work and things like that. Um, other ways that we support students is we update the, the class teachers regularly about all students. We send reminders. We have an overview sheet that gives a little bit of uh, information about each um, student. Um, if they've had an update to their education psychology report, then we will update staff and, and we do their overview and we send that out to them. So we like to make sure that the children are in the forefront of everybody's minds and just, and it can be also feedback from other teachers of things that worked well, and we share that with the teachers. And we also ask for support from um, families at home as well. We obviously see them in school. They can hold a lot together in school and get home and uh, tell you lots of things they may not always want to tell us in school. So if you are finding that they are um, struggling at home, please do drop us a line because it really does help us um, if we're planning or we need to look at timetables and put extra support in places. So it's really important to have that open com um, conversation with us. So we have our waves of support and this will determine whether um, your child has um, a learner profile or not. So our wave one is the quality first teaching that every teacher delivers within the classroom. Um, this, they will be using the learner profiles in the classroom and what we have on our learner profiles, we have strategies that the children themselves have told us work or it might have come from a, a report from an OT or a speech and language therapist or the ed site, we put suggested um, support strategies on there as well. So wave one is what the class teacher is delivering in, in class. Now wave one students won't be having, won't uh, receive a learner profile, um, but they are on our register. They are spoken about regularly. We have a, a student meeting every single week where we go through children, talk about them, make sure that they're on track um, for where they're meant to be heading. Similarly, if we feel they need to move up to a, one, a wave two, then they can move up to a wave two. If they're on wave two and they need, they're not get, not needing as much support anymore, then they can move down to wave one. So it it is fluid. The, the waves are fluid. So wave two is our in-class support and time-limited interventions. So that might be a very short intervention. It may be it's a pastoral intervention with the pastoral team. It may be coming out and working on some computer skills with us. Um, and very much if we are going into class to support them, then they are classed as wave two. If they are getting um, more than just in-class support from us, you know, we're having to sit with them quite a bit, you know, work with them and really keep them on track, they may have a learner profile. Um, not all children on Wave 2 will have a learner profile. Wave 3 is our specialist support. This is most of the children that would come out for directed studies um, intervention. They may have programmes. Um, they would have been assessed probably by the ed psych. They may have OT or speech and language involved. Um, so they are um, highly targeted children within our register. Um, as I said, they can come out for up to five hours a week, depending on whether they have Arabic or Islamic um, sorry, Arabic or MFL exemption. That process, if we go down that, that route with you, will be discussed with you um, and we will go through that process with you, um, collecting lots of evidence on the way. So that's our waves of support. That's all linked to our provision map and it's linked to our learner profiles. Now this year, um, both primary and secondary, our learner, learner profiles will be changing because we have just got a new programme called Provision Map. So come September, the um, learner profiles will look slightly different, but we're looking forward to unveiling them um, when the time comes. So I'm going to hand over now to Miss Smallberger and she will take the next slides. Hello everyone, my name is Kaylin, and as Lindsay previously mentioned, I mainly support students in English. Um, aside from our in-class supports, we run directed study sessions. So depending on the child, um, we support them in either 
English or maths or science, whatever they need. And directed studies are teacher-led support lessons um, for those three main subjects. And they are small groups. So we usually have no more than nine students, seven to nine students that come out. Usually it's a lot less, but that is our biggest group that we have where those students come out and we will go through it um, English or whatever is needed. It's usually like a pre-teach of whatever is coming or going over what they have done in class. Um, our directed study sessions are mainly are for students who are MFL and or Arabic exempt. So those students will fall under wave three. Um, we also support with humanities or whatever the child's needs are. So as I mentioned before, it's a pre-teach or um, additional time for classwork or homework support, whatever the needs are. Um, we also are currently running additional project-based modules for students who are MFL and Arabic exempt. Um, what this looks like is we have just run the ASDAN uh, photography course where students were able to explore different aspects of photography, create a portfolio. Um, they have really enjoyed doing this. So in the future, we will have English ASDAN courses running and cooking ASDAN courses. And there are just so many that we could go into. Um, these all take place in our inclusion, inclusion classrooms. Next, please, Lindsay. <laughs> so how do we track progress? Um, we have Go for Schools, which shows us all our students' data. Um, we also have diagnostics and internal class assessments. We have GLs and PTs, which are for math, English, and science. And we have NGRTs, which is reading for English. Um, all these assessments have just been run. They do run throughout the year, some of them once, some of them two to three times. Um, we use this data to help us um, provide support where needed. So we also have our own inclusion assessments, which we usually do before a student joins or if needed once a student has joined and a teacher has raised them or even if parents think that they need additional support we can do an inclusion assessment. So these are usually our um, York reading comprehension assessments. We have the maths assessment which is um, the MALT assessment and we have quite a few of those that we run um, just to see where our students are at and where they need more support. I will be handing over to Janice <laughs> to talk to you about assessments. Sorry, I have my mic on. It's Thanks, okay. Kaylin. Um, so as Lindsay mentioned um, at the start of the presentation, there may be times when you might be asked to have an external assessment done for your child, or maybe some of you may have already had one done. A lot of the time, this would be if you are looking to apply for an Arabic exemption. The um, application has to go to the KHDA and they require an educational psychology assessment to be done. So this is not something that we can do internally in the school. This would be done at a psychology clinic. Um, and these examinations would give us more detail to be able to support your child, um, as well as having an Arabic exemption recommendation made. Um, these uh, assessments are also used for in the higher years, in year 10 and above, for exam um, assessment accommodations. So where students would need maybe extra time or a reader, um, a prompter, there are different recommendations that can be made to support students. Um, if you are going to have an assessment done, we would ask that you speak with us first. Um, there are some clinics that we work closely with and we can always pass their information on to you if you need it. Uh, for Arabic exemptions, 
It must be a DHA registered um, educational psychologist. So again, if that is a route that you consider going down for your child, if you feel they are struggling and will benefit from the extra time that directed studies would give them, then please do let us know and we can certainly point you in the right direction of where to go for that um, assessment. Once the assessment has been done, the psychologists would contact us um, to give us a copy of the report once they've given you um, their feedback and gone through it with you. And with the psychologist and ourselves, then we can look at them and provide the best support um, for your child. In the older years, so from nine up, sorry, from year nine and up, um, those uh, ed psych reports are needed for official exam for the GCSE and A-level um, exam applications. So as I mentioned there, there are some recommendations that are made in those reports, and these are called access arrangements. Um, the whole purpose of access arrangements um, in the lower years, so years seven to nine, they do help the students. Certainly, it may be that they have extra time, a smaller group invigilation, not in the main classroom. It may be that they are allowed to type for their examinations rather than handwriting them. Um, and these are designed to level the playing field. This is the terminology that the exam board uses. So these um, arrangements are never meant to give advantage to students, but to ensure that everybody has an equal chance and that by having possibly dyslexia, dyscalculia, ADHD, whatever it may be, that the accommodations mean that students can access exams in a fair way that gives them equal chance to their peers. Um, we always make sure that this is their normal way of working, and that's another phrase that the um, exam board always use. So once this is recommended on an ed psych report, we make sure that all exams are done in this way from year seven and up. So if a student has to come to um, the inclusion room for a small group assessment, we do that rather than leaving the children sitting with their whole class. Um, they did the same exam, but just whatever the accommodations are then they're given to them in the smaller room with us as supervisors. Um, the common um, access arrangements are listed there for you. Okay, so I'm going to hand over now to Zara. Hi, hello everybody. Um, thank you, Janice. Right, I'm just, I'm just going to talk to you about, we have slide labels as your six to seven transition. But this actually includes also those children that might be coming in later on in secondary because the process we actually follow is is the same um, so even if you're coming into year year nine or year 10 this would apply to your child as well uh, we sort of i mean obviously we will be with our year sixes at the moment we have been having meetings with their with their primary teachers they've been uh, we had them we probably met them about three four weeks ago and we've actually had the children coming over, which has been quite exciting for us as well. It gives us a chance to meet them, to get to know them. Um, and um, usually, usually we tend to go, what we have, we have gone through is we've gone through the basics of, uh, of English and just gone over a couple of things that the children need to be aware of. Uh, we're starting our maths program uh, at the moment. I think it started this week. And we have uh, pastoral sessions as well. So it gives us an idea of, uh, of your child, um, you know, just an overview of, of what they're like. Um, hopefully they're a lot more comfortable uh, by the time they, uh, these transition weeks are over. Um, a lot of the information that we get is passed on from, from their teachers. So the teachers will specify uh, to us maybe the kind of difficulties that the child might have, the things that, you know, they like to do. Um, you know, what works really well for them, what they mainly sort of struggle with, um, and it gives us, us a better idea. At the end of, um, probably I think uh, at, the end of this, uh, at the end of this week, maybe we'll be sending out parent and student booklets that will give you a better idea as well of, of our inclusion department and the kind of things that, uh, that the children need to sort of uh, go through. I think with the maths, we're also hopefully be giving the children some uh, basic math skills books that they can work through over the holidays because that we it would be nice for them when they come in they have uh, they have like a good basic start especially for their maths um, and you know the, the lessons we try and make them as fun fun as possible as we can 
Uh, what we've also started this year, as Kaylin mentioned, is the ASDAN program, and this is called a, a lift-off program, which we've also started with the Year Sixes, uh, and they're going through that. So it's just about them getting to know the school, uh, what their expectations are. Lots of them have questions about detentions and um, ISAMs and stuff. So yeah, it's just to put them at ease, really. Um, so that's mainly our transition and obviously with the kids that are coming in who are not coming into year seven we do have information that's been passed on from um, the admissions team from any assessments that we have done maybe as well um, and we do have contact with uh, with your schools with your previous schools any reports or anything so those are factored in uh, when we're looking at your children and um, and placements within uh, within the inclusion team and stuff um, right, so I'll move on to the next slide, which is um, sort of the frequently asked questions that we have encountered probably over the last couple of years, uh, or the most, you know, the most common questions that we have. Um, if I have a concern about my child having difficulties in class, um, who do I speak to? Um, if your child is uh, having difficulty with a specific subject, say it's, um, it's English, the best person to contact would actually be to contact the English teacher and possibly to sort of a CC in uh, the Inclusion Link teacher as well. You will know who your Inclusion Link teacher is because within the first couple of weeks of starting in September, your Inclusion Link teacher will send you out an email to introduce herself and stuff. So in this way, we sort of have, have a better idea of what's going on. Um, if your child, if you feel that they're actually struggling across the board, this more than English, there's other subjects as well that they're struggling with, then uh, then you're more than welcome to to send us an email and we'll sort of uh, dig around, look to see what's what's going on in the sessions with the child. And then we sort of tend to tailor, uh, we work with the teacher to find out what's what's working, what's not working. Maybe there could be sessions that we could change within the directed studies. Maybe we need to pull them out or whatever. So it's um, we work together with the teachers on this to sort of come to a solution uh, and with you as well, obviously. Um, right, next question. What happens at the end of year six? How is the information about my child passed on to the next teacher? Um, I think I've just touched on that. So um, with meetings that we've had and obviously the uh, student profiles that we have, so we take on all that information as well. Um, next one, uh, when my child, will my child always need inclusion support? This very much, I would say, is, uh, is dependent on the child. We do find that uh, some children, their waves of support are quite fluid, so it does change. You might change from a wave one to a two or a wave three or vice versa, come back down. It all depends on uh, on uh, pro on the progress the child is making. So we track and monitor all our children. We have weekly student meetings where we all come together as a team and we give feedback on the child. You know, what are they struggling in? Maybe they were struggling in this subject, or you know. Uh, so we do we do that. So based on that, um, the support might change. Um, obviously, it's a com they will not change unless we've had these conversations with the child's teacher and with yourselves and with the child as well. Um, and if we do find that uh, there's no support or there's less support needed in class, it is withdrawn, but it's withdrawn slowly. But the child will still stay on our register and it mo they move on to what we call our watch list. So we still monitor, monitor the child. We still keep an eye, see what's going on. And if we feel that support needs to be put back in, it's put back in as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite fluid, I guess. And yeah, the kids do, they will move up and down. Probably, I mean, over the years, we haven't really had much, much movement, but it obviously just depends on, on your child and how they're progressing. Um, what shall I do if I need to speak with a team and it's before or after my scheduled uh, meeting time? You are welcome to email us uh, for any anything that you have. We have, uh, I guess, I guess like an open, I'd say open door, open email policy. You can also walk in as well if you want, that's fine. Um, but um, yeah, you're welcome to email us, touch base with us where, you know, we'll, we'll try and reply back to you within, within 24 hours or so. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that's all I have. I will pass on to back to Lindsay, I think. Mm. Oh, Great. I 
Yes, I'm back on. Thank you. Um, we have less than five minutes remaining on our webinar, so I will whiz through these questions. Um, and if I can't get through all of them before it cuts out, I, we all just do a little recording with the answers to it all. So these are the questions that came up from the questionnaire. Please, can you tell me how Year 12 BTECs work with inclusion? My son has a reader and scribe through GCSEs. I'm unsure of that support going forward. That support, um, whatever is on their ed psych, um, will continue all the way through till they leave school with us. Um, and um, that won't change, what, uh, especially if their ed psych is in um, the time limit and we've applied for it through the JC, GCQ, that will remain. So they will still get the same report, um, support that they have through their GCSEs. Can my child be exempt from Arabic lessons? Um, yes, as um, discussed before, we can. There is a process and it is a lot harder now um, than it was before. But yes, we can do that. That will be a conversation between the link teacher, yourselves and the teachers, because there's a lot of ev evidence that we have to gather for that. And yes, it would be focusing on maths or English or homework or skills. Very much depends on the needs of the child. Um, how will he be supported emotionally? How is my IEP and strategies incorporated into secondary? They're very, very much the same as primary. The teachers have the IEPs. They are, or we call them learner profiles. They are involved in setting those targets. And um, we do a lots of track and monitoring to make sure those targets are being implemented as best they can, and then give further strategies to the class. So it's very much a joined up thinking when it comes to working with your child and their learner profiles. Um, if they've stopped receiving that support, then it means that uh, they no longer needed it or they didn't need it as much and wave one support from the class teacher and differentiation or adaptation to the curriculum was enough at that time. However, it is fluid and if we feel that when they come to secondary, they need to move back on and go up another wave, then we will have those conversations with you. Similarly, if you've got concerns, please reach out to us. Um, how the inclusion communicate with parents. Uh, it's very much open door policy, so please do get in touch with us if you need to. We will also regularly um, just reach out to you and just make sure everything's okay. If a teacher has come to us and we've done a bit of digging and we feel there's a need to call you in for a meeting, then we will call you in for a meeting. But it is very much a two-way conversation and very much an open door policy. Um, and what they need to work on. So we'll all be linked to your learner profile as well. Will learning continue to be primarily digital? Yes, there are options to get lots of books for things as well. And there are printouts, um, but it is, they, instead of working on Seesaw, they will now work on Teams. Um, they will get used to it. It is a bit tricky at the beginning, but they will get used to it because they'll be using it regularly every day. Um, how is the information about inclusion students communicated with staff? We go through in the inset week and regularly because we send it out weekly, we go through all of the information with the staff and they get a copy of absolutely everything. The provision map is linked with our data system so every child can kind of hover on a child and bring up their most immediate information. So it's very data and information rich school in that respect. Um, the timetable, um, there are two hours of MFL, so those two MFL, if they haven't got M they're exempt from MFL, they will come out and be with us in the um, inclusion room and work on their uh, work in there. There is a safe space if they need to come out and regulate. Some children have an exit card, which we will set up with the pastoral team, and then they can come and use our sensory room. They can also come and use our inclusion room. Our students are really good to let us know that they're in there, and then we let their teachers know where they are. Lots of children ut utilise that, so it's a very, very well-used room. Um, is there a designated adult that students to go to? Yes, we find the link teacher is often the teacher that they come and have a chat with, but actually everybody in our team is a link teacher for a child. So we all know the children, they can come and talk to us, but they do tend to find their own person that they like to um, to talk to. And if we can avoid anything, you know, like they're struggling with homework and things like that, we will help them. Now, I'm very conscious that we might be running out of time. Um, so in terms of those are the questions that we were given, um, we hope that we have answered everything for you. However, if we haven't, please do reach out to us. Um, you can reach out directly to me, um, Lindsay Wing. My name is on the um, on the website and I'd be more than happy to discuss your child's needs further or um, 
or go from there. Uh, we and we will be continue to meet with the children for the rest of this term and we are really looking forward to meeting them and getting to know them in September. So thank you very much for taking the time out this evening and uh, we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you.